Uh, from last section, we were able to, uh, you know, the, the theme was uh, writing a function like 1 over 1 minus x as a power series, which that was the one we basically started with, and then, you know, we, <coughs> we played our... Uh, little game here and said, well, if I was doing 1 over 1 plus x squared, well, I can write that as 1 over 1 minus negative x squared. And so here the x is being played by the role of negative x squared, and so I can write negative x squared 0 to infinity is the range there. <coughs> and so we can get we can get a power series representation of that. Okay? <coughs> a couple of drawbacks on doing that is those are pretty specific. I mean, we can do those and others. Uh, you know, we did some different things and we did some differentiating and integrating to get some others out of that. But that's, if you think about it, that's going to be kind of limited on uh, what we can do there. And the other thing is that's really that's centered up. That only, this only works for a certain range of values, right? It works for, remember this only works if X is between, uh, well this one, I think it'd be the same on that one, but <clears throat> if X is between what? Negative one and positive one? It only works there. And so that's a limitation too. So what if I had some function that wasn't going to be as nice to uh, convert over to a power series as a uh, <coughs> real good example? 1 over x. As a power series, that's going to be hard to use this on that, isn't it? For one thing, I don't have 1. Because sometimes, you know, if I had a 2, I could divide off the 2 and get that. Uh, but I don't even have anything like that to work with here. So that's going to be hard to use that on. Um, and that's just one small little example. And <clears throat> turns out with the things that we'll do too, we're going to center, uh, center it where we want to. Here, this is, this is centered at ne basically 0, negative 1 to 1, around 0. <clears throat> but we're going to center it wherever we want to, and we're going to be able to do just about any function we want to, writing it as, as a power series. And again, the reason for doing that, one big reason is so we can integrate things. If I can write it as a sum of, this means this is a sum of <coughs> things. Um, so anyway, there's different reasons, and Taylor series are allow us to do that. Here's how we do it. If we have some function f of x, <coughs> that's going to equal the Taylor series. This is the Taylor series. n equals 0 to infinity. f <coughs> parentheses n of a over n factorial times x minus a to the nth power. This is called the Taylor series. Of f centered at a. <clears throat> and so like I was saying this we can put we can center it and what we'll mean I will show you what uh, that means later on centering it up at a but <clears throat> it's kind of where it uh, converges with the function but anyway <clears throat> now a couple of notes here of course we've got the factorial and so these Taylor series always involve that in factorial on the bottom <clears throat> What do you know about that? 
Remember, we don't use that sort of notation much. What does that mean? You remember what that means? If I do a F and then it looks like a parentheses in power. Remember, this was our way of getting uh, higher derivatives than the second and first derivative. That means the nth derivative. And what that means is, I'm going to have to come up with an expression when we haven't done this at all either up to this point. I'm going to have to come up with some expression for the nth derivative or the general derivative of a function. Nth derivative. And that's something, like I said, we have not yet done. <coughs> the way we'll do it is we're going to, uh, we're going to have this. So we start off with this function. And so we're just going to compute several of the derivatives, fourth, fifth. So we'll do the first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative. Calculate those. Usually that's fairly easy. <clears throat> and then since I want it centered at A, I will calculate that value at A and then see if I can come up with a formula for that, the nth derivative. It's kind of interesting how it all works. And like I said, we haven't done it uh, much at all at all. We don't have to go to that 27th derivative, but 4th or 5th is probably going to suffice us. So anyway, <clears throat> shall we do one? Sure. Find, let's, let me write this up here, this little formula. So the Taylor series, <laughs> n equals 0 to infinity, nth derivative at a, n factorial, x minus a to the nth power. <coughs> That's what a Taylor series looks like. <coughs> so let's find the Taylor series for <coughs> 1 over x. f of x equals 1 over x. centered at a equals 1. Okay, so step one is find the nth derivative formula. Because this formula is based upon that, well, that's one uh, one big part of it. Because the rest of the parts are easy; they're pretty much f figured out for us. Because n factorial is n factorial, whatever n is, you do factorial. Uh, x minus a. Well, we know what a is to the nth power. So that's all we need is to figure out the nth derivative. That's a big part of it. But all right, so the nth, uh, this is the nth derivative of f at a value, at the a value, which is 1 in this case. So we're going to start by computing the first few derivatives. <coughs> of this thing, okay? See what happens. All right, so we've got f of x, let's just write f of x. 1 over x is x to the minus 1, the easy way to compute it. <coughs> f then prime. So what's f prime? Derivative? Be negative x to the minus 2. Second derivative? That'll be negative times negative 2 x to the minus 3, which is positive 2 x to the minus 3. Third, third derivative? Be negative 6 x to the minus 4. You with me? Fourth derivative, 24, x minus 5. Let's do one more. Fifth derivative. Uh, what's negative 5 times 24? 
Negative 120. X to minus 6. With me so far? Just our good old basic finding the derivative of power rule. <clears throat> Is that okay so far? <laughs> All right, now. Now let's look at, let's <clears throat> evaluate these at A equals 1. Our center. A equals 1 is our center. So evaluate those at A, 1. All right, so it's f of 1, and that's going to be 1. F of one, uh, f prime of 1, so I'm just plugging in, that's negative 1. Uh, f double prime of 1, so that's f double prime is 2x negative 3. That's just 2, isn't it? F double, uh, triple prime, third derivative at 1. Negative 6. The good thing about centering at 1, <laughs> with this one anyway, the x part's just 1. Uh, 24 <coughs> and 120. Fifth derivative is 120. So I'm just taking, I'm plugging each time and plugging in 1 to each one of these. Negative 120. Okay. <coughs> so, one thing I can note there, yeah, one easy little thing to note there, the nth derivative of a, which is 1, my a is 1. One thing I can clearly see there is it's alternating signs. And so the nth derivative expression is going to have to involve the negative uh, the alternating sign part, which is negative 1 to the n or negative 1 to the n minus 1, depending on which one is which. Um, and so the first, so <clears throat> which one would it be? Would it be n, n minus 1? I have to take one away. Well, the first derivative, when n equals 1, the first derivative is negative 1. So that means that the first one needs to be a negative. So the nth one would be, yeah, that would be negative 1 to the n, wouldn't it? because that would put it negative 1 to the 1, which is negative 1. Negative 1 squared for the second one would be positive 1, which is the positive, okay? So we're good there. But the other is then the actual number here. <coughs> well, <coughs> because of the way this one worked, let me just show you this. 6 is 2 times 3. 2 is 2 times 1. 24 is 2 times 3 times 4. Maybe I should go the other way. 3 times 2 times 1. 4, 3, 2, 1 is 24. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is 120. Does that ring any bells? It's a factorial, yeah. This is a factorial. And if you think about it, that's what was happening here because each time, here I multiplied 2 times 3 and got the 6. Here I multiplied the 6 times the 4, so 3 times 4. And then the 4 times the uh, 6 gave me 24, and then the 24 times 5, well, that's 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. Gives me 120. <coughs> so, yeah, each time I'm just adding another number onto that. So, yeah, that's a factorial. Now, the question is, is it n factorial? Is it n plus 1 factorial? Is it n minus 1 factorial? Well, <clears throat> the second derivative is 2. The number is 2. Is that 2 factorial? That's 2 factorial. Uh, that's 3 factorial, and I'm on the third derivative. This is 4 factorial, I'm on the fourth derivative. So what do you think? Isn't the nth derivative going to be negative 1 to the n times n factorial? I do believe so. I do believe so. Is that okay? Any cause for alarm right there? Okay, so this is then what I'm going to plug into my Taylor series formula-wise. The nth derivative at a, which in this case is 1, is negative 1 to the n n factorial. Okay, so that's step 2. Step 2 is 
plug that expression in to the Taylor series form. And simplify. <coughs> so I have f of x, the Taylor series is f of x n equals 0 to infinity. Oh, one other quick note here. Notice we start at n equals 0. And so one thing you have to be real careful with, especially on these are the first few of your formula. Uh, you need to make sure it works for not only for phi, but it works for z 0 because we need to start at n equals 0. This is the zero derivative, if you will, <laughs> just a function. Um, <clears throat> is that true? Is this is this going to be? That's one factorial. One is. Uh, so the question then: Does it work for zero? N equals zero, and that would mean that would need to be zero factorial. Is that true? Is zero factorial one? By definition, it is. Zero factorial is one. So this works for any n whatsoever. So we're good to go. Works for all n. So we're good. All right, so we plug that into our uh, nth derivative at a n factorial x minus a. <coughs> plug in basically what we got there. This goes here, so that would be negative 1 to the nth power n factorial over n factorial. Hey, that's going to work out pretty good, isn't it? And then, like I said, x minus a, a is 1 to the nth power. Simplified out. And that's a pretty good expression for it. So it turns out f of x, 1 over x, power series wise is, one representation of it anyway, is centered at 1, is negative 1 to the n, x minus 1 to the n. Okay, works pretty good for that. Now, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> one other quick little note here. I'm not sure if they do this on all these, but I had it in my notes somewhere along the way, so let me go ahead and show you this. With this, um, since they're both to the nth power, like you know, if you have 2 to the n times 3 to the n, can't you say that's 6 to the n? You can go ahead and multiply those. Since they're both to the nth power, you can multiply those together. And say, what would that become then? So it would be negative 1 times x minus 1 to the nth power. So multiply, you can go ahead and multiply those together, which makes it become, wouldn't that be minus x plus 1 to the nth? Or 1 minus x to the nth? So if you see some slight variation like that, that's maybe what, uh, if you do that, is it wrong? No, but just be aware that you can do that. Is that right? Not too bad, right? Not too bad. What's that? Could we add them if it was 2 to the n plus 3 to the n? No. No, those, that's not 5 to the n, right. Just for multiplying. All right, let's try another one. <clears throat> How about find the Taylor series 4? f of x equals ln of x. 
centered at A equals 1. <coughs> So again, we're looking for this series, but that series, the main thing that we first need to compute is the nth derivative formula, right? <coughs> and so I want to find uh, first find the uh, nth derivative at a. All right. <coughs> so f of x being ln of x, we have f prime of x equals what? One over x. For x minus 1, what's second derivative? Second derivative would be minus 1, x minus 2. Third derivative is, bring down the power, negative 1 times 2, positive 2, x minus 3. What about the fourth derivative? Fourth derivative would be minus 6, x minus 4. Fifth derivative is 24, x minus 5. Those look familiar? Eventually they turned into, well, after the first step, that's just the ones we were just doing, wasn't it? Because once we did the ln of x, then, uh, then we we're back to 1 over x, which is x minus 1. <coughs> All right, so we need, uh, so now compute these at uh, a equals 1. because that's where we want to center. If a equals 2, we do a equal 2. All right, so what does that make it? f of 1 would be ln of 1. Hey, that's ln 1 is 0, isn't it? f prime at 1 would be x minus uh, 1 to the minus 1, which is 1. Second derivative at 1 is negative 1 times 1 to the negative 2, which is negative 1. Again, these are pretty easy uh, calculations. Third derivative will be 2 times x to the negative 3, so it would be 2 times 1 to the negative 3, which is 2. Get the idea here. It will be negative 6 and 24, because 1 to the negative 5 is 1. Okay? So what's our nth derivative? Is there a pattern? Well, like we said, it basically turned into what we had. However, we've shifted a, just a little bit, haven't we? Because this, these are factorials, but this is right here. This is 4 factorial. This is negative 3 factorial. This is 2 factorial. And that's 1 factorial. See what I'm saying? Okay, so let's, <clears throat> we do have the alternating signs again. Uh, however, the first derivative, it's a positive. If I do negative 1 to the n, won't that make the first derivative be negative? So what do I need to do there for the power of negative 1? Make it n minus 1 or n positive plus 1? I think they usually go n minus 1, but it wouldn't really matter there. <coughs> Either one would suffice. But what about my factorial? Well. The second derivative has one factorial. The third derivative has two factorial. The fourth derivative has three factorial. So what do I need to do to my factorial? Make it n minus one factorial, okay? It's one less than the n factorial, right? n here is two, that's the second derivative. So n is two, it's one factorial. n equals three, it's three factorial. With me? So far so good. Uh, no, no, no. Like I said, we could have gone with the n plus 1 here. That was just, we could do either, either n minus 1, n plus 1. I don't know why, but I think they usually go with n minus 1. But You see what I'm saying? You could use n plus 1 there. But no, you're talking about those two? No. 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 This one just happened to be, uh, yeah, just happened to match. But there is another slight problem. Okay, all right, <clears throat> that's one factorial. This is uh, zero factorial. What about this one? Because, again, we need to start with n equals zero, which 
for the derivative means that's the regular function. How, how do I do that? <coughs> well, the point is here, it doesn't work for the first one, for n equals 0. It works for everything else. This formula, though, doesn't work for, maybe I should put a question mark, I mean an exclamation point there. It doesn't work for n equals 0 because 0, there's not a factorial that's 0. Because 0 factorial is 1, 1 factorial is 1. That's the way it works. But anyway, we'll just make note of that. What we're going to have to do is, since this series needs to start at 0, I need to think about n equals 0 separately, okay? All right, but, <clears throat> but that's going to work for anything bigger than uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, any of the others, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's plug that into our uh, series here. So my series, my f of x would equal ln of x would equal, <coughs> <coughs> well, we're going to separate out n equals 0, and we're going to start, so just leave a little space right there and I'll talk about it. We're going to add to that, we're going to start at n equals 1 for this, because that's where our formula works, n equals 1 to infinity. Then I'm going to plug in the f uh, nth derivative formula at a, which is negative 1 to the n minus 1. Times n minus 1 factorial over n factorial times the x minus a, so the x minus 1 to the n. So I've got everything figured out except for that zero term. Okay, so let's work on it. Turns out something nice happens to it, but anyway. So if I'm talking the zero term there. which is just, like I said, that's just not doing any derivative, so it's just ln of x for the uh, <coughs> for this part of it. F, the zeroth derivative is just the function, okay? n equals zero at one. That just means the function, because you're not doing the derivative, okay? <clears throat> so it's ln of 1, just plug in uh, a for 1, and then n factorial will be 0 factorial, times x minus 1 to the 0. So really I'm just doing this separately for n equals 0, putting in a 0 here, 0 here, and a 0 here. <clears throat> because the formula, that formula just didn't work for it. Now, what we note here is this is actually what? What's ln of 1? ln of 1 is 0. 0 factorial is 1. And x minus 1 to the 0 is 1. But this, this whole term is 0 anyway. <laughs> so it wound up, it didn't account for anything. But uh, you do have to split it out because we don't want to start at n equals 0. We're going to start at n equals 1. So it turns out we've got this. It's just this. This term didn't turn out to be anything, but you never know. It does sometimes. You just Sometimes you just have to leave it, leave it as it is. <laughs> okay, now, here's the next thing. On this part of it, <coughs> we can do some ca uh, canceling, can't we? Because of the nature of uh, n factorial, n minus 1 factorial, couldn't I write, couldn't I write n factorial as to be helpful with that? How could I write it? n times n minus 1 factorial? Couldn't I write that, n factorial, that way? Because that's what factorial does. It starts at n and then keeps subtracting 1. So isn't, we did it, I think we did it kind of the other way previously where we had n plus 1 factorial, we took n plus 1 factorial and we wrote it as n plus 1 times n factorial. 
Well, here we need to go the other way because I've got n minus 1 factorial. You with me? Okay. So those cancel. <coughs> and so we wind up with, what do we wind up with? n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n minus 1, over n times x minus 1 to the n. Now, if we do our same, uh, same little thing there with the negative 1. <coughs> now, this one, since I've got n minus 1, I'm, I'm going to do this. That's a pretty good answer right there. Would it be wrong if it was on the test and you didn't do the rest of this? No, this would be fine. <coughs> but let me just show you. All right, so this would be n equals 1 to infinity. And that, I could say, is negative 1 to the n, negative 1 to the negative 1 over n. Well, <coughs> since these are both n powers, they may very well want you to go ahead and combine those, which is exactly what I had a while ago. Remember what happened? Multiply these, we get what? It would be uh, 1 minus x to the n, wouldn't it? So those two combine to make that. Negative 1 to the negative 1 is how much? Negative 1? So this is what I wind up with. Negative 1 over n times 1 minus x to the n. Or they may just go ahead and say n equals 1 to infinity negative 1 minus x to the n over n. I don't know. Either one of those. All right? Just just in case. <clears throat>